we are not supposed to be like having feelings. <laughs> and we were all having so many feelings. Third time is meant to be the charm, but try five times and try them 16 years apart. We're going back in time to each of those five games, highlighting the Olympic career that indeed ended in golden triumph, that of Olympic figure skater Alyona Savchenko. I'm so delighted to say that we're joined by the Olympic champion herself in Oberstdorf, Germany, Alyona Savchenko. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here and also to help us along the way, another Olympic champion, Nagano 1998 gold medalist, Tara Lipinski. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. And he's a figure skating expert and analyst on Twitter. You know him as Rocker Skating. Live from New York, it's Jackie Wong. Why am I not an Olympic champion? This is really sad. <laughs> <laughs> You're an Olympic champion in our hearts, Jackie. <laughs> We're headed back to 2002. This is our first segment. It's called our icebreaker. All right, Alyona, I want to start with you. First off, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. And let's oh go back God. to 2002. <laughs> what do you remember? And you look great here. You were 18. You were world junior champion. But what do you remember from Salt Lake, Lake 2002? <laughs> when I see this picture, <laughs> it reminds me again on these games. Uh, my eyes were so big. And when I come to the uh, Olympic Village, I was like, oh my God, so many athletes, everything is huge. You've got a baby Amelia now yourself, but this <laughs> is young Alyona too. <laughs> yeah, I remember this time, <laughs> young, <laughs> nice. All right, well, Tara Lipinski, we're very excited to have you as well. And I didn't realize this, you were a torchbearer for Salt Lake 2002. I was, wow. it was such an exciting day. Obviously that was the Olympics after um, my Olympics in 98 and just going back to an Olympics was was so special and magical. We're so excited to have another Olympic gold medalist with us. I mean, this is 23 years ago now. Can you believe that? How? Where did I go? I'm so old. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, and I think we have baby Tara. Oh. There she is. <laughs> I mean, what is that hat? I feel like... Is that one of your childhood costumes from skating? <laughs> no, I think it's a Disney World photo. Jackie Wong, we've got a throwback. I think this is you in 2002. Why is this even necessary? How's his form, <laughs> figure skating experts? How is he looking? It's not good. <laughs> There are two Olympic gold medalists on here who are like 50,000 times better of skater than, than I ever was. So I think we should move on. <laughs> okay, no, uh, like fine. <laughs> no. That's fine. We can, let's move on. And we've got a, a baby photo of Jackie Watt. <laughs> oh at how my cute God. Jackie is. How did you get this? Amazing. We have our ways. Okay, uh, those were so fun. And we're going to continue breaking the ice, you guys, here. We're going to throw things back. And we've got a game called Which Came First? And it's all based off of Alyona Savchenko's career. Tara, I'm gonna start with you. Which came first, Tara? Alyona Savchenko's Olympic debut or Britney Spears' Oops, I Did It Again? <laughs> I feel like Britney Spears came first. You got it. Well done. Right? Britney Good. Spears, March 2000, <laughs> Alyona Sevchenko, February 2002. All right, Jackie, you are up next. Which came first? Alyona Sevchenko's first competition with her partner, Robin Sokobi, or Twitter launching? Oh, Alyona and, oh. and Robin, totally. Twitter launched, you're correct, in July of 2006, <laughs> and Alyona and Robin started skating together. Is 2004, right, Alyona? 2003, yeah. Okay, Alyona, <laughs> which came first, your first Olympic medal or the Avatar movie coming out? Oh, an Avatar whoa. fan? That's hard. <laughs> uh, I think my first medal. And the Olympics. Oh, no? The movie came out first. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I felt okay, should, we, should we move on? <laughs> yes, it's better. Okay, our icebreaker is complete. Let's consider that our six minute warm up and glide straight into what we like to call the free skate. When Alyona Savchenko skated onto Olympic ice for the first time at Salt Lake City 2002, who knew we would still be watching her skate 16 years later at Pyeongchang 2018? Let's go back in time. Alyona had always dreamt of Olympic figure skating gold, but the road wasn't easy. At Salt Lake and then to Reno in 2006, Alyona fell short of a medal, finishing off the podium. But things turned around at Vancouver 2010 when she, with Pairs partner Robin Solkovy, tasted Olympic medal success for the first time. Heading into Sochi 2014, it looked like Alyona's golden moment could finally arrive. But it wasn't meant to be, as she and Solkovy took the third spot on the podium once again. At her fifth Winter Olympics, aged 34 and partnering Bruno Masso, Alyona knew Pyeongchang could be her last chance for gold. What happened next will go down as one of the most iconic moments in Olympic figure skating history. Alyona Savchenko, five Olympic Games. We've talked a little bit about Salt Lake City. We're gonna see some vision here in Salt Lake with Stanislav Morozov of Ukraine. And this was your first partner, obviously you and Stanislav. What was kind of the overarching feeling uh, for the two of you in Salt Lake? I had trouble with my partner. So we always fight with each other. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I am here in the Olympic Games and I want to give it best and it's something special for me. And then you fight before the short program. The first throw jump was completely out. And I was like, okay, yeah. so that's it. Not in the podium or even tents or something like this. I was like, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> Just skate, <laughs> do the best. After this, I say, okay, I go home and I change everything. I, I want to change my <laughs> life. <laughs> In a way, Alyona, do you feel like that kind of gave you this catalyst for change of partnering yeah. up with Robin Sokovi and, you know, moving and, and skating for Germany? I feel much more uh, potential in me and more power. I want to be not here, not in the Ukraine, not with this partner. I need to change completely. Tara, I want to ask you about this because, you know, the pressure of being a teenager, as you know, at the Olympics is huge. I think every skater has to have um, a moment like that. You know, for me, I was 15th at the World Championships um, my very first year. And it was, you know, like Aliona, you said you needed to change a lot of things. I think you realize I, I see my dream, I know my dream, what do I have to do to get there? This isn't working. And then you have a very clear goal to, to work on and, and work up from and build from. And sometimes you need those peaks and valleys to, to get to the top. You just see all the ingredients are right there. All the ingredients are there <laughs> and you're just fine tuning and refining. And then over, you know, the next decade plus, you put it all together, but you could see that little star and who you were going to be in 2002. And I will say this, you are my favorite pair skater. And Aww. I think it, uh, it, 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 it's crazy that, you know, when they asked to do this, I was like, oh my God, this is so incredible. <laughs> I'm such a huge fan. Alyona, do you remember watching Tara's win yeah. in Nagano? Did you watch this? Of course. Yes, of course. I was the huge fan and I was watching and crying because it was, even now, <laughs> even now I will cry because I was really sad when uh, Tara didn't compete, uh, continue compete. I was like, my God, I just start to follow this girl in love. So, and now she don't skate anymore. So I was always rewatching the videos because um, it was magical. I love it when Olympic champions just ban over each other. It's just, I mean, oh it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Jackie, could you imagine uh, live tweeting Nagano and or Salt Lake City? I feel like you'd have a lot of, of pretty good content to work with. I, 
I would have a lot of content. I think one of these days I'll go back to the Olympic Channel archive and just like live tweet, live tweet the heck out of it. I think that's what I'll do. <laughs> well, we're going to look forward to that live tweeting. And let's move into Torino 2006, where we can see, obviously, you've changed partners. You're now skating for Germany, Robin Sokovi. And by 2005 Worlds, you know, your top six, bronze at the Grand Prix final, silver at Europeans. Here you guys finished sixth place. What was some of the emotion around your performance in Torino? Well, as you can see, I, I changed also in the color. <laughs> <laughs> You're very tan. <laughs> was, yeah. On this point, uh, we was really ready to go for medal. And uh, not for gold, but maybe a bronze medal. And uh, we mm. come to Olympics Games and our energy was not in this right uh, moment, not in the right yeah. uh, place. It was mistake after mistake and we, we tried to give a best, but of course on the end was not what we actually expected. Well, I'm happy that we're we're, get, we're building towards a, a happier ending in your story. That's what I love about your <laughs> Olympic journey because we're going to fast forward here. We're going to go to Vancouver 2010. And Jackie, between Torino and Vancouver, Aljona and Robin really became, you know, one of the teams, world champions, European champions. Can you kind of set the scene for us as far as the pairs go before Vancouver 2010? I, I'm so obsessed with this era because, um, I don't know, Aliona, in a lot of ways, um, you know, whether it was with Robin or later with Bruno, just became a trendsetter. Every pair in the world right now has Aliona and, and Robin to, to thank for, you know, the, the interesting transitions, the interesting lifts, the interesting everything. Um, and that's what they were known for, right? That 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 era of 2007 to 2010 was literally them being like, yeah, we could do all these things and do incredible uh, tricks, um, incredible skating, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, coming into this, it was it was really uh, Aliona already changing the sport, and and a lot of other pairs kind of going along with it, becoming a point monster, becoming a skater who eats up points at every turn. And Aliona, when you Think back to Vancouver, obviously, when we look at some of this vision, what's kind of the overarching takeaway from that? Because, you know, world champion, there's maybe some expectation, but the Chinese teams were so strong, they win gold and silver, and you do walk away with your first Olympic medal, but maybe bronze wasn't the color that you were looking for. Yeah, we went uh, like a favorite to this Olympics games. Before each Olympics was something happening bad. One core was again, I was um, really sick. 2009, I was so sick that I couldn't move. So we maybe lost the concentration on ourselves. And um, yeah, and then we skated a really good uh, short program, but the Chinese was better. And um, in the long program, we did mistake. And of course, if you do mistake, it's already done. <laughs> it was not um, really what I love to skate. It was a little bit, not boring, but you know. It was conservative for what you're used to. That was so <laughs> like toned down for you. That was the thing that yeah. was most surprising. If we do move forward into Sochi 2014, here's, this is maybe more classic Aljona Savchenko, the Pink Panther, <laughs> the onesies. Tara, this was the first time that you were in the booth for NBC. What do you remember of this moment and Aljona and Robin, again, making that play for gold, but coming out there and trying to bring their best skating? I can go on and on here, so you're gonna have to just shut me down when I go too long. My first time commentating, being able to watch you, love your skating so much, and explain to the audience these little things that are so special. You were never um, a competitive pair skater that just did one thing. Somehow you seamlessly, um, you know, put the choreography with the high quality elements. And then you added the personality and the power and the speed and those <gasps> moments that people love in pair skating. And I think that 
you know, at this point, even watching, like you can't help but want you to reach your goal. And as you mentioned, at every Olympics, there was a problem, there was a mistake, there was something that took you out of the runnings. So Aliona, you guys, I want to move us ahead a little bit because I want to give Pyeongchang yeah. its due, your golden <laughs> moment. You and Robin, bronze again. Obviously, uh, you know, um, Volosavar and Trankov were, were so good. But what was the one takeaway for you from Sochi? I was okay. Then it should be a gold medal. A medal is at stake, but the one they wanted, that gold medal, is most likely gone. We did something wrong, and I think I was on the point, okay, I need to move on. The same way like I did with uh, uh, Ukraine, so I need to change my life and uh, to reach my goal and my dream. Uh, when I was in the competition in Sochi, I was like, no, it's not my last. It, I don't feel it's my last uh, competition wow. and I don't want to finish. I, I get more energy to, to continue. And I said, okay, Robin didn't want it to continue and all potential we, we put out. So we couldn't get any better. And uh, I was sure that I need something completely different. And then I was looking for a new partner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Which transitions us obviously out of Sochi and towards Pyeongchang 2018. And Jackie, when, when Bruno Maso and Aliona Sevchenko pair up in those years leading up to Pyeongchang, what's kind of the feel within figure skating? What's the vibe that this duo can, can do at the Olympics? So, the first feeling in, in the figure skating world was Bruno Masso. Like, it was literally like, okay, he was a decent pair skater in France, right? And it's like, if Aliona picked Bruno, there's gotta be something there that's really special. And then the sentiment as, you know, 2015 to 2018 happened was, okay, Aliona is literally making Bruno Masso work 24 hours a day, and now he's becoming like an incredible pair skater. Like that was that was like the, the the general like gist of how people were thinking about it. But what the thing that I was most um, impressed with with that partnership was with Bruno. It was like this this a completely different thing, where the trend that you were setting was about bringing dance, bringing ice dance really into figure skate or into pair skating that we've never really seen before. I mean, the, the both programs in Pyeongchang were just, they were seamless programs. They were mm. programs that you would see. It, it was, it was like you were watching an ice dance free dance with like all the crazy pairs tricks, um, you know, going along with it. And, and that, that was what was so phenomenal about it because you didn't go into 2018 being a favorite, the, the favorite, right? Mm -hmm. And and the fact that you had these two incredibly brilliant programs, just it it everything switched around. Jackie, you're talking about the seamlessness of these programs, and actually it. In the short program, Bruno doubles that side by side jump, and Tara, in the NBC broadcast, you actually. You actually said that you loved the program so much that you didn't realize that he had doubled. I love this program so much. I love watching her so much that I didn't even see he did a double on those side-by-sides. And that mistake has cost them. And for, obviously, Aliona, you knew right after. You, you said to him, did you double? Tara, what was your viewpoint of them now having to come back from being in fourth place after the short program? I remember the short program just thinking like, I mean, really, like, how could he do this to her? Like, <laughs> how many years? You can see it on his face, too. Right? Like, we are at this for a long time now. Like, how could you do this? Jokingly, obviously. I mean, but I think that, you know, it really did. It, it hit me hard because I knew that that, you know, going into the free skate, that was... It was gonna be difficult. So when we skate, I didn't realize that he did actually double. And he <laughs> yep. was on the step sequence, he was completely different. Normally he smiled, he danced, and 
he was so like, and I was like, hmm, something is wrong here. But um, then I directly asked because I wanted to be sure is something wrong or not. And then he said, I was like, okay, it shouldn't be then. It's like this, what I can do. So um, it's <laughs> happened. And um, I was so sad because before I said to him, you know, I have experience. You want always to give the best in the Olympics games because you think it's the ice is completely different and this all rings make you scared and everything is like, don't just skate and do what you actually do in the practice every day. And I was just um, like kind of sad that he didn't listen to me. <laughs> and that's another thing I think you had so much experience, so many years of, you know, peaks and valleys to learn from that I don't know how many skaters would have been able to come out with the same type of attack that you did in that free skate after being fourth in the short program at your fifth Olympic games, striving for a gold medal, finally. Mm. That's a testament to who you are as an athlete and a skater and how mentally strong you were because in that free skate just there there was no fear it, there was no thought of this is my fifth time this is you know everything's on the line here and i think that's what makes olympic performances great and separates them from second and first so Aliona, you go from this moment finishing the short program in fourth place and actually in you know six points back it's not like it you were just a, a couple points back what's the feeling from the short program into this beautiful a visceral free skate and how did you guys kind of bring your best in the moment when you needed it the most i slept really good so <laughs> i didn't think anything and my husband was like what's going on with you you're not sad i say why why i should be sad tomorrow it's new day and tomorrow will something happen i i believed in something what it will be something special we go to breakfast i try to change everything so the day before we go with bruno i said okay you go by yourself uh, i don't want to be with you before competition <laughs> <laughs> and when we step on the ice in the practice uh, ring, so at seven in the morning, I remember this practice was like, oh my God, how we can skate better than this practice. It was everything clean, uh, everything fast. I was like, okay, he's ready. He's ready to do something. And I took my all experience and I said, okay, I have nothing to lose and it's now or never it's like i can just enjoy this and so when we start to do the first element so we go on the starting post it was so good like never never before and not even in the practice this is the only bruno missed in the short program Perfect. Not today, Bruno. And I was like, okay, this is my moment. You know, you're talking about this program going so perfectly. And when you land that last big element, it almost is like you can you can feel or taste the gold medal in front of you. Yes. I was like, okay, all hard elements are done, clean. And this one was like, okay now nobody can stop me and after this landing uh, we go to the lift and i was like oh there's uh, olympics rings amazing <laughs> and i skate clean and i was stopping myself not to push too much i was like okay 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 so now i need to be concentrate <laughs> on every small element because yeah any small elements can make big mistake. <laughs> Tara, this is similar to your Nagano free when you land, what was it, a seventh, eighth triple in your free skate. That was when I, you know, I knew I had to get past that jump. The program, you know, was still difficult at the end. I still had a, a sequence, but I knew, I knew that was my ticket and I knew I had to do it and I was so nervous. I remember skating into it, just thinking like, 
oh, it's here, it's here, this is the moment. And then when, it's almost like what you say, Alina, when everything's going well and it feels so good, that feeling of your blade hitting the ice and just that surge of emotion and you look around and you are saying, I'm at the Olympics and I don't know how this is, this is possible. Like my dream is coming true. And um, you do, you have those moments because I was so happy that I felt like I had so much energy. And I was like, just like you, I, I, okay, take your time. There's still another half to the program and there's nothing better than something going well at an Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah. Tara, and so I want your take on this and then Jackie, I want you to follow Tara. In the arena, I don't think we had a moment quite like this finish in the free skate. That was fearless. They gave a gold medal performance. They said they worked their entire lives for these very last four minutes. This is how you handle Olympic pressure. Tara, tell, tell me a little bit about how you experienced it calling it for NBC. When I get real nervous, I stand up. So <laughs> Tara and Johnny always know that like I'm super invested in a performance when I'm like standing up and moving <laughs> and talking and I'm, you know, Jackie, I think you were close. I was probably like blocking yeah. your- No, we were all standing. We were, yeah. there were a lot yeah. of us standing up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think after the short program, you just knew that this was going to be a difficult feat. <laughs> and, you know, you you just knew what was at stake. The program's so iconic because, I mean, just that your, your costumes matched the purple in the arena and the music was... It, it built and built and built in this very Olympic way that... It, the opening pose, the infinity sign. I mean, I can keep going on. It's just, there were so many, yes, there were so many, exactly, so many special moments. And somehow it felt like the program just started to fly. It built with the music. You were hitting the elements with, you know, feet to spare. And it was so solid, so aggressive. And you just, you, you knew what was happening. And I had complete, chills and it's always hard because like as a commentator you need to like really be thinking of a million other things and all the people in your ear and all of that but you're also living in the moment and i'll never forget this moment because it was one of the best of those games and it was just like at the end when you're on the ice like i couldn't believe it happened it was it was yeah. it. it was everything yes. that worked for unfolding in this magical way that only can happen at an olympic games Jackie, I mean, they still only won by half a point, but yeah. it didn't matter because of the way that they performed. <laughs> so, totally. I mean, I, there was something poetic about this whole thing, because if you look at the the two Olympics before, you and Robin went in, did good short programs, and then the free skates were like, OK, what happened? And here it was like, OK, what happened with the short program? And then you had that free skate that you have been trying to get out in the Olympics for 16 years and it's there. We're in the press area. We are not supposed to be like having feelings. <laughs> and we were all having so many feelings because we knew what was yes. going on. And it was just, it was just, uh, it was a magical program. It, it, is, it is the greatest pairs free skate of all time. I mean, maybe greatest pairs program of all time. What is this feeling like? Mm -hmm. We see you obviously with a gold medal. Lying down on the ice and like, wow, didn't believe that it's actually happened what you dream all your life and what you imagine every time when you go on the competition to skate that good. And when we went to the scores, I couldn't be happy, happy because I knew Okay, on this point, we have three pairs and they can be also good. And the last couple was skating and so everything come. And then on the end, we see my dream going to ice cream two hours every day at four in the morning. And all pieces in one, it's like small movies. 
and now I am here on this planet like okay this is my moment just enjoy and I couldn't believe it all right well you guys I'm gonna move us into our last bit here and no figure skating event is obviously complete without a judges panel but this time it's the three of you handing out the GOEs it's time for our final segment it's called and the scores please and let's go ahead and look at, I love this, Aliona, your reaction to gold as we've seen it here. And we were just talking about it, but Jackie, who did it better? Because we also have Tara's reaction when she won gold and not gonna- Oh yeah. So <laughs> loud. <laughs> Tara, how do you encapsulate that feeling for an athlete, seeing, seeing the results, seeing that you've won gold? I think it's almost what you just, you were saying, Aliona, it's like you, you do your performance, you're not thinking about a medal or a placement there. And when everything's unfolding in the way that you've always dreamed of, it's this surreal feeling. You know, you practice, you know, how many times have you done that program? How many times have you envisioned this moment? And then it's happening and it is really, really surreal. You just, you feel like it's an outer body experience and in the best way possible. But then, you know, you go and you start getting your scores and you're coming back down, you know, to earth and, and those thoughts are crossing your mind of like, what's going to happen. I saw it and I like just couldn't believe this was happening. And I think it is just this, for one, a release of energy of all of these, the, all of the years, the pressure of the nerves of these hopes and these dreams. And then it's these small movies that go through your head of the first time you stepped on the ice, all the times you watched, you know, the Olympics and thought, oh, I, I wish I could go, I wish I could be there. And all of those times where you thought it wasn't going to happen and then it's happening and it's just, it really is like you can't, you can't get a grip on I mean, that's me. I mean, maybe this is different for yeah. everyone. I, mean, I don't see many people screaming like I did. So, but I just, <laughs> I couldn't believe that it, it happened. All right. So Aliona, five Olympic games, 10 costumes. You guys, the challenge now for our judging panel here is I need you to pick the podium of Aliona Savchenko costumes. And Tara, <laughs> you are, I think, maybe the fashionista of the panel. So what are your top three here? <laughs> well, my, my top one is your free skate long. I mean, the, uh, like I said, it matched the arena, the purple in the arena, but just the, the beauty of it and um, the elegance, I, I feel like that's my number one. But, and what's crazy is I think your short program, I thought you looked so cute. The whole, like the way the dress moved, I felt like the color was beautiful. That would probably be my second. And then I, I have some others, but I feel like Pink Panther is so fun and you, and that's how, you know, if someone says, Aliona, like I'll think of a million things, but I'll also think of that program. So I feel like that would be, yeah my third <laughs> Jackie what do you think are you are you going with Tara three for three so yes <laughs> to to the infinity uh free skate like that is the 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 top I would go pink panther second um because I I I do think I do think there was a, a certain kind of uh iconism to <laughs> that costume yeah. that that um you know, uh, like there weren't that many women wearing, um, you know, leotards, like full leotards at that point. And I think you you, you gave a lot of inf inspiration to a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, skaters. And then I would say the that man short program, like it's it is that top three, just a little bit reversed. Aliona, I mean, it seemed as though you were always trying to make a statement on the ice, not only with the way you've skated, as Jackie and Tara have so beautifully talked and spoken about today, but also the way that you dressed. Well, I think um, all costumes need to match um, your personality and music and the team, what you skate on. And um, 
Yeah, I really loved, uh, of course, my um, lila costume. So, <laughs> of course, this is my favorite. Awesome. Well, you've given us some iconic looks throughout the years. And you guys, it has been such a blast to look back at all of them. And I want to close the show with a memorable moment for Aliona. So, awesome. Tara, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with you. And what is one thing that really stands out to you from what we've spoken about today? I just think you made such an Olympic moment and it was bigger than just a clean program and you know you reaching your goal and finally winning a gold medal i think it was you know for someone who didn't know skating who is just watching the olympics like this is what the olympics are all about you know 16 years of olympics and you did not care you put no limits on yourself you were going to go above and beyond to do whatever it took it's bigger than just a, an amazing figure skating moment. It's it's what the Olympics are about. Tara, you speak so well, I feel like maybe you should work in TV at some point <laughs> in your career. Uh, Jackie Wong, what do you, can you wrap us up here to it? Tara said it so beautifully, what do you have to add? I know, what am I supposed to add to that? Um, <laughs> the, the resilience for me, it really is that, that belief that there's something better and that there's something better inside that needs to still be, you know, coming out. Very few people are going to go to five Olympics and then win the Olympic gold on the last Olympics, right? Like it's not something that is uh, so much achievable as it is inspirational. If you didn't have that drive, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be having this conversation, and the figure skating world yeah. would be much much less rich because of that. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how does how does this all feel to you as we wrap things up, you know, being able to reflect on your career? Obviously, you've done it many times before, but to do so in this way. Well, you know, like it's again the same feeling when you win the gold medal on the Olympics. It's kind of uh, uh, refresh. Thank you for doing this for me and um, to tell so nicely and uh, so touching. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Jackie. And uh, thank you, Nick. All right, can we get a group group high five? You guys, well done. High fives here all around. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to each of you, honestly, to Jackie Wong, obviously, to Olympic champion Tara Lipinski, to Aljona Savchenko for letting us hop into the time machine on episode three. I'm Nick McCarvel. It has been a joy with each of you. Thank you for joining us. And remember, we're always stronger together. How about him, folks? Al Jonas and Kinko.